Coach Jeff Heron, thanks a lot for being with me today. And uh, first question, obviously, is uh, why retire today? <laughs> Don't really have a good answer for that one, Matt. I, you know, uh, I began thinking about it during the season. Uh, you know, just just didn't feel like that. Uh, you know, it, it was becoming more difficult for me to have the passion and energy and, and things that I think you have to have to coach certainly at the 7A level in Georgia. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about it, and, and then we got on a run, and, you know, it's kind of like playing golf, and you, you're having a miserable day, and then you hit a few good shots, and all of a sudden you want to play again. So I was just kind of back and forth all through Christmas and, you know, the New Year's. And, you know, my wife and I have talked about it a lot, and, uh, you know, just I just felt like, you know, that it was the best thing for me but I also felt like it was the best thing for Camden County that, uh, you know, I didn't want to stick around, you know, uh, past my time and past my prime. And, you know, I didn't want to become a liability. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm being serious, you know, because. I know you're being serious. I laugh at that, though. I mean, one of the greatest coaches in Georgia high school football history. Don't think that well, you would ever be a liability. Let me ask you, did any of those four long bus rides from Kingsland to Georg to, you know, Atlanta and back that you made in four consecutive weeks, not to mention the hotel stays have anything to do with it. Well, it certainly didn't help. Uh, you know, the, uh, Lowndes and, and Valdosta trips, the two weeks before those four started. So six road trips in a row and, uh, you know, certainly going on the road is tough on you anytime. And, uh, you know, with, with just some, some health issues that I've had, being on the road made it even harder. So, uh, but you know, we were winning and when you're winning, everything feels better, you know? So, uh, you know, I, I had time to reflect on, let's say this had a lot of time to think while we were on the road for sure. <laughs> no doubt about it. We have the highlights of that uh, semifinal game, uh, Camden County and Walton behind us. And you guys made a great run in that third quarter and put a scare into them. Uh, ended up losing that game, but pulled it within 21, 17. I thought it was, ironic that uh you know if this is indeed the end and i say that uh you know in jest because i've called three of your final games in my career uh and this being the you know this was the third one here um they would be ironic that you ended your career at walton where you actually started your head coaching career back in 1989. well you know that that thought crossed my mind uh you know it, it did that night you know, because like I said, I'd been considering it and, 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 you know, after the game and got to see a lot of my old players from that very first team. And I thought, you know, this is kind of neat. And, you know, maybe this is God's way of telling me that, you know, okay, let's we put a nice little ribbon on it. You know, you started here, you end here. Uh, unfortunately, both of them were losses. <laughs> the first game when I was the Walton coach and this game when I was coaching against them. So, uh, yeah, that, that little irony there, I guess. But, uh, uh you know, it, it, it was a great run. Uh, we, we did not play our best game that night against Walton, and it was frustrating. But I think we just ran out of gas. And uh, and Walton had a really good team, and they played well that night. So uh, you finish up your final season getting to the semifinals with a team that probably very few expected to get to the semifinals. Uh, reflect on this final stint at Camden County and what you were able to do in a short period of time we had great conversations leading into that semifinal game about how when you returned the the Camden County that you had been at before, you know, from a player's expectation standpoint, was not the same one that you came back to. But it looks like you created it again. Well, you know, that that was the goal. I mean, no question. That when, when I talked to them and they talked to me about coming back, uh, you know, this is kind of my coaching home and, you know, I stayed here longer than any place I've ever been. And, you know, it was kind of like when Bear Bryant made the comment when he left Kentucky to go to Alabama, he said, well, mama called, you know, and I kind of felt that way about Camden County that, you know, if I was going to continue coaching, that this was the only place I wanted to do it. And, you know, the goal was we just wanted to get our kids back to where they believed they could play with anybody. Uh, and, you know, it, that had kind of slipped a little bit for them. And, you know, in the first year, I thought I'll come in and get this done this year, you know, and we had a really talented group of kids, uh, but we lost you know, our last six games of the year. And, you know, five of them were on the almost the last play of the game, and, and it was one of the more frustrating things I've ever been through. 
but we learned. And the next year we got off the slow start, started 0 and 2. But after that second loss, it's like something clicked and our, our kids started believing a little bit more. And, you know, we wound up having a pretty good season last year and, and won a playoff game and got to play at home in a playoff game, which hadn't happened in a while. And then that confidence kind of bled into this year. And, you know, this year we lost a few games that we probably shouldn't have maybe, but the, the kids watching them in, in, in the last part of the season in the playoff run and just, just seeing – seeing their belief change uh, to where they knew they were supposed to win. And that was really fun to watch and fun to be a part of. You had over 330 total high school football victories, 309 in the state of Georgia. And there's only 15 coaches in the entire history of the GHSA that won over 300 games, 300 or over. And you've had the fifth highest winning percentage among that group, five state championships, three at Camden County, three in a row at Camden County, or was it three out of four? I, I lose track. But you had three in a short period of time in Camden County about 15 years ago, one one at Oconee County before that, one one at Grayson after that. As you reflect on your career, you know, what do you remember most, uh, you know, about that career and what you were able to accomplish? Well, man, there's so many good memories, you know, uh, there's some bad ones too. We lost some games there, you know, that we shouldn't have, but I've just been very fortunate. I, I, and, and I mean that with all sincerity, uh, you know, Jimmy Dorsey hired me uh, right out of college. I was a grad assistant at Tennessee Tech, got fired along with the rest of the staff there, you know. and I thought, Welcome I, to the world of uh, college football. Yeah, right? you know, and I thought, is this what it's all about? And you know, Jimmy kind of rescued me, uh, gave me a job, taught me into coming to Georgia, and I learned so much from him. And, you know, I, I never, ever thought that I would be in it this long and, and, you know, be a part of that many victories. But, you know, the things that the good Lord's looked after me, man, and I have been blessed by being in good places that had good players and most of the time good administration. And, you know, when, when you've got good talent and you've got – Sorry about that. You, you, when you got good talent and you got good administration and, and, you know, everybody's pulling the same direction, you know, it makes it easy. And I was very fortunate because my first job was, as you said, at Walton, had a great principal, you know, and we had a good year. And then all of a sudden, you know, I couldn't get a job for five years at McEacher and I probably interviewed for 80 jobs and nobody would hire me. And, but after we had a good year at Walton, then all of a sudden it became easier to get a job. And then it, became more easy to get a better job. And so I've been very fortunate. I had a lot of really good football players uh, play for me, a lot of great assistants and a lot of great administrators. And when you have those things, it's it, it's easy to be successful. One of my lasting memories of you um, was actually in a victory. It was when your last game at Grayson. You won the state championship. Uh, you guys uh, beat Roswell. They missed a last-second kick that, you know, could have tied the game and continued overtime. And I remember you went out and, you know, while your team was celebrating, you went out to console the kicker who missed that kick and just reached down and kind of touched him on the shoulder when he was going through one of the most difficult moments of his uh, young life at that point. Well, you know, I remember you sent me an email about that and, uh, you know, told me that you, you, you liked that. And, you know, honestly, it wasn't something I thought about. It wasn't something, you know, I wasn't sitting there going, well, if he misses it, I'm going to go say, you know, it, it just happened. And, you know, it just so that I, I'm looking, I'm watching the kick. And, and when I turned, I saw the kid and, you know, I, I don't know. You know God, God said, you know, go say something to this young man in his time of need. And, you know, what I said to him was, son, you know, if, if it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't have been in this situation because he's made a couple of field goals and, he made a tackle on the kickoff and a punt return that saved two touchdowns. And, you know, people forget that. So it just seemed like the right thing to do. And, uh, again, wasn't a lot of forethought, but, um, you know, I, I do appreciate you mentioning that or whatever. You know, that, that was a heck of a football game. It was. Two of the best uh, 7A, 6A, big school teams, I believe, it's ever played uh, for a state championship. So much talent on the field. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate that it ended the way we did. Just a couple more questions, just kind of big picture questions. Uh, as you look at high school football right now in the state of Georgia, uh, what do you like about it? What do you, for lack of better words, don't like about it? Or would you like to see changed if you had the opportunity to kind of fix some things? 
Well, man, I'm probably going to say some things here, get me in trouble, you know, but <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah. You know, kids are still kids, you know, and they're fun to coach and they like discipline and all those things. Um, but I think it's become increasingly more difficult for teams from the southern part of the state that are somewhat isolated because, you know, sooner or later, you're going to run into teams in the Atlanta area that have the benefit of proximity where a lot of athletes will decide to move into a particular school. Very similar to what happened at Grayson. They, you know, we had them, Roswell had them. There were two great football teams loaded with talent. You know, in South Georgia, that's not as easy. You know, or I shouldn't say easy. It just doesn't happen as much because of proximity. I mean, closest school to us in Georgia is almost 40 miles away. So, you know, up there in 40 miles, there might be 30 schools, you know. And so kids move. They, it's become almost kind of an all-star mentality that, well, that kid went there, so I'm going to go there. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think coaches are cheating or whatever. You know, nobody's going to turn down a kid that shows up at your door, you know, and says, I want to come and play here. But, you know, a lot of kids move these days. And they, they for different reasons. And that part, I think, is, is taking the, the, the joy, the uh, – hometown feel uh, out of high school football and I hate that you know I, I, I really do and you know so much has been said anymore you know and, you know you watch watch broadcasts and everybody wants to talk about prospects and how many stars a kid's got and you know all that and again hey it's the way of the world you, you have to adapt you have to adjust you have to but but I miss those days where you know kids played for their hometown and everybody supported them on Friday night and a kid wouldn't move you know if his house was on fire he probably wouldn't move out of town you know and uh, I think it's made it more difficult for the teams in the south to compete every year I think we can do it uh, I think you know you're gonna have to take have a special class a talented class come along together things go right and all that but you know if you run into a team that's had a lot of kids move in and it's just super talented not much you can do and, uh, that bothers me because i don't know that the playing field is exactly as level as it once was my final uh, big picture question is more of a x's and o's kind of question uh, you guys ran the wing t or the west coast wing t as you described it to us <laughs> appreciate y'all saying that by the way <laughs> as we were preparing kidding. for the uh, semifinal game uh uh, and I mean, you guys were very effective with it. I think it's still a great offense. Do, do you see a day where some of the teams where they don't have the spread mentality, but they're trying to force it, maybe get back to trying to do something a little bit different? Uh, the two wing T teams, I believe it was two that we saw in GPB this year, both of them were very successful in doing what they were doing. You know, football always goes in cycles. Uh, no question. And, you know, Again, uh, I watch the NFL games, of course, you know, these past couple of weekends, and there's so many wing T principles being used now in, in wing T. I mean, gosh, Kansas City, I, you know, I believe Andy Reid was a wing T coach before I, in fact, <laughs> I think he really was. Um, you know, so there's a lot of the principles that we use in it, but, you know, I'm telling you, Matt, you know, and, and we catch a lot of grief. You know, people want to say, well, they're not doing this, they're old fashioned, whatever, but. Had we not been a wing T team this year, we wouldn't have been playing on GPB in the semifinals because it's what fit our kids. We we sold them on we have to be more physical than the teams we play. You know, finesse is not our game. Being physical is. And we sold that to our kids and our kids bought in. And, you know, anybody that watched our, you know, first three playoff games at least, uh, they saw that we won that battle. And, you know, I've always been a believer. You win the line of scrimmage and you, know, you, you tackle better than your opponent, you got a better chance of being successful. And so, you know, uh, again, uh, other teams may copy it, may, may work for them, may not. But it is Camden County. It's been a formula that's worked here for a long time. And, uh, it worked again this year, and it was fun to watch. Well, Coach, the wing tee might be old-fashioned, but one thing that never goes out of fashion is winning football. So if you can find a way to win football, it will be fashionable. Whether people like it or not, as long as you're winning, you're doing the right thing in that regard. And sometimes even when you're not winning, you're doing the right <laughs> thing. So, Coach, thanks so much for being with us. It's been a pleasure. I'm not 
I'm not uh, closing the door just yet that I won't call another Jeff Heron game because in 2012, I called your final game at Camden. In 2016, I called your final game at Grayson, and I didn't think I'd ever call another game with Jeff Heron. And then right here in 2023, I did it again when you guys played at Walton. So I hold out hope that uh, I will call another Jeff Heron game sometime well, in the not too distant future. Matt, you know, you know, the, they say we, we all have plans, but our plans uh, are not exactly God's plans. You know, so who knows? But if you call another one of my games, Matt, it's probably going to be a rec league softball game or a soccer <laughs> game with one of my grandkids playing in it. So uh, maybe I'll coach them if I can figure out the rules. All right. Well, I look forward to that coach. Thanks a lot for being with us. Congratulations on a wonderful career. You've given Georgia high school football a lot of highlights. Well, thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure and been a great ride.